Hello, my name is Giacomo Grassi. I work for the Joint Research Center of the European Commission. And today you will learn about uh, guidance on reporting Red Plus performance using IPCC guidance. Hopefully, uh, after this uh, lecture, the participant should be able to understand the general reporting and review principle and uh, the, the context and the general concepts of the existing IPCC reporting tables. This slide and the following slides include some uh, links to relevant UNFCC uh, decision, relevant uh, publication like Lukowski Gold, and relevant guidance from World Bank, and other relevant scientific publications. The lecture includes five sections. Uh, the first one is on reporting and accounting uh, red proof performance uh, according to NFC reporting requirement. Then uh, guidance and modality on reporting red performance from NFCC. And then reporting principle under NFCC. Then structure of a Grenadier's inventory. And then measure challenges for reporting red plus by developing countries. Let's start with the first one, which is reporting and accounting uh, red performance, uh, the UNFC uh, reporting requirements. In the context of UNFCC, information must be well documented, transparent and consistent with reporting requirements. In this concept, reporting refers to the preparation and publication of information on anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions and removals and on mitigation action. This information should be included in a greenhouse gas inventory composed of estimates in a common reporting format table, so-called CRF tables, plus information on methods in a national inventory report or similar. The accounting is the use of the reporting information to assess the party performance in relation to its commitment, for example, under Kyoto, or in relation to reference level like in Red Plus. And this is based for possible uh, payment for result-based action. The quality of inventory relies not only on the credibility of estimates, but also on the way this information is presented. So much care should be paid on the presentation and the clarity and the transparency of this information. Report requirements uh, differ for NS1 and non NS1 countries. For NS1 countries, uh, the requirements include national communications every four years, greenhouse gas inventory on an annual basis, and biannual uh, report every two years, all subject to uh, a review. Uh, the most important is the greenhouse gas inventory, which is composed of two dist dist distinct documents. There is on the one hand the common reporting format tables, which contain a time series of emissions estimates from 1990 till the year, uh, the actual year minus two. And then there is a national metric report which includes all information, background data and methods used in the data analysis and institutional arrangement underlying the preparation of uh, uh, the greenhouse gas inventory, which again is reviewed annually. Then, always for NS1 country, there has been a special submissions under Kyoto on a forest management reference level. For non NS1 countries, the reporting uh, requirements include uh, national communications every five years and a biennial update report every two years. The least developed small island developing country may submit uh, these uh, uh, documents at their discretion. On top of that, there is, in the context of RED, the first reference uh, emissions uh, level submission, which is voluntary. The guidelines on uh, the requirements of these, uh, of these documents are pretty detailed for NS1 countries, especially for greenhouse gas inventory, uh, which are submitted annually, but are far more generic for non NS1 parties. The reporting requ requirements for non NS1 countries, which is the main focus of this uh, presentation, uh, starting from uh, national communication. National communication includes information national circumstances, the national greenhouse inventory, and information on strategy for uh, mitigations. The inventory should cover uh, the year, at least the year 94 for the first communication and the year 2000 for the second national communication. Every four years, following uh, the relevant guidance, uh, it is done every four years and should follow the IPCC uh, methodologies. Uh, the as a minimum, the 96 guidance should be followed, 
But very importantly, countries are encouraged to use the PC 2003 good practice guidance and may use also 2006 guidance for national, national chemical gas inventories. And this uh, is a warm encourage because would allow uh, an easy compatibility with uh, most of other countries which already use these kind of uh, guidelines. The Biannual Update Report include updated information on national circumstances, institutional arrangement, uh, national greenhouse gas estimates, including a national inventory report, and information on mitigation actions. These are done every two years, starting December 2014, following adopted guidelines and EPC methodologies, including the 2003 Good Practice Guidance for LUCF. BUR are subject of technical assessment as part of the International Consultation and Analysis, so-called ICA. The BUR uh, includes information on, uh, for red activities on the National Forest Monitoring System and information on how safeguards are addressed. The UNFCC decision text has not fixed a starting year uh, nor a time series for greenhouse gas inventory to be reported in the BUR. However, each non ns one country is encouraged to provide a consistent time series back to the US reporting in the previous national communications and some information for previous submissions here, which were 94 and 2000. For red activities, information to be reported include uh, forest reference emissions level or forest reference level, prepared on the basis of the grid guidance, specifically decision 12 CP17 and IPC uh, methodologies, including 2003 good practice guidance for LUCF. This information is subject to assessment according to relevant decision. And uh, the assessment uh, will, um, uh, the, the, the information in country submission should be transparent, complete, uh, complete means that allow to reproduce uh, reference level, accurate, consistent, and shall include information used for constructing reference level, including historical data, information methods that assess approaches, models, and assumptions used, and description of relevant policies and plans, pools and gases, and activities including a reference level, and the reason for any emissions, noting that any significant pool and activities cannot be excluded. Furthermore, information to be uh, reported is uh, related information related to safeguards according to decision 1 CP 16 and for re receiving payments for result-based action information of forest related emissions removal resulting from bright activities is to be reported as annexed to the BUR. All this information is assessed as part of the ICA process. This, and, uh, this slide shows the main uh, FCC decision relevant to uh, reporting by countries and allow to give uh, an overview, a detailed overview of what has been described in the previous slides. These slides provide an overview of the main NPC guidelines relevant to UNFCC reporting by countries, um, starting from the 96 uh, guidelines for national greenhouse inventories to the 2000 guidance on uncertainty management, and then 2003, 2006 guidance, and uh, the 2013 uh, supplement uh, for wetlands, and uh, uh, the KP supplement for unstrong countries. This slide show an overview of the guidance from the Carbon Fund Methodological Framework. Countries should submit enough details to enable the construction of reference level and reported emissions and world. This include key data and methods and assumptions that are made. The World Bank uh, Carbon Fund Methodological Framework suggests a number of methodological steps and maps and or synthesized data that should be reported and produced. The first list on the left includes the methodological step that should be made publicly available. The second table on the right includes the maps and or synthesized data 
for different types of spatial information that should be displayed publicly. It should be accompanied by an explanation of how these maps and data were derived from underlying uh, other data. Analysis should also be made publicly uh, available. We now move to the second section, which is the guidance on modalities on reporting red plus performance from your SEC. This slide addressed an overview of uh, the a uh, detailed overview of the latest guidance and modalities from UNSC reporting uh, for reporting red plus uh, performance. In particular, the decision 14 CM CP19 on modalities for measuring, reporting, and verifying uh, detail and clarify that um, measuring, reporting, and verification of anthropogenic forest related emissions by sources and removal by sinks and uh, forest carbon stocks and uh, forest area change should be consistent with the methodological guidance provided in decision 4 CP15 and any guidance on measurements, reporting and verification of national appropriate mitigation action by developing country as agreed by the uh, UNFCC and in according with any future uh, decision. Results uh, are, will be measured again at forest reference uh, emission level and should be expressed in terms of carbon dioxide, dioxide equivalent per year. This is the metrics of red performance. Parties are encouraged to improve data and methodologies over time through the so-called phased uh, stepwise or phased approach while maintaining consistency with established or uh, as appropriate updated reference level. Data information used for estimating forest area changes and forest carbon stock should be transparent, consistent over time, and consistent with established forest reference level. Data and information should be provided through biannual update reports by party, taking into consideration the additional flexibility given to the latest developing countries and small island developing countries. To obtain and receive payments for result-based action, countries should apply a technical Annex on a voluntary basis, of course. That and information provided in this technical annex shall be consistent with the relevant decision and following the guidance provided therein. In order to obtain and receive payments for result based action, the result needs to be verified by a technical team of experts. The technical team consists of two UNFCC LUCF experts from a developing and from developed country party and will analyze the submitted data and information. In particular, the expert review team will analyze the extent to which uh, the submission is consistent. There is consistency in methodologies, definition, comprehensiveness, uh, information provided between the assessor reference level and the result of implementation of activity. So essentially the result of implementation of activity should be entirely consistent in methods with the assess reference level. This will ensure that the comparison will be made between apples and, uh, and apples from a, a methodological point of view. The data and information pro provided in the technical annex should be transparent, consistent, complete and accurate and consistent with the guidance. In the red context, complete means that the provision of information allows the reconstruction of the reference level. This is very much linked with the issue of transparency. And finally, uh, it is also checked that the results are accurate to the extent possible. The party that submitted the technical annex and the technical team of experts may interact with each other to provide clarification and additional information on technical annex to facilitate the analysis of the technical team. This phase is very important and is uh, very important also from the country perspective understand better which are the, the, the needs and the expectation of the review team. The technical team will develop a technical report published on the UNFCC web platform, which contains technical annex submitted by the party, analysis of technical annex, an area for technical improvements on data methods, for example, any comments and or responses by the party, including area for further improvement and capacity building needs. 
We now move to the third section of the lecture, which is about reporting principle and the GMCC, the general reporting principle, which are transparency, consistency, comparability, completeness and accuracy. These five general reporting principle, principle guide the estimation reporting of greenhouse gas uh, emissions under the UFCC, and therefore also in the right context. This principle are also the, the basis and the guide for the process of review or technical assessment of the estimates. Let's start with transparency. Transparency means that all assumptions and the methodology used in the mentor should be clearly explained and documented so that anybody could verify its correctness. Estimates uh, should be reported at the level of disaggregation which allow verifying calculation. Verification and reproducibility of the estimates are very important. Verification, according to APC, means uh, comparing the reported estimates with uh, independent uh, estimates. And it's very important that the, the reported information by countries is transparent enough to allow potentially this verification by either the technical assessment team or other third uh, parties or stakeholders. Most relevant background data should be uh, provided in the report or should be made available in a website, including where relevant uh, calculation steps, emission factor and activity data, and potentially also the uh, satellite image that have been used if uh, uh, appropriate. Consistency means that the same definition of methodology should be used in different years. This should ensure that differences between years and categories reflect differences in emissions. Under some circumstances, estimates using different methodologies over time can be considered consistent if they have been calculated in a transparent manner. Recalculation are possible, are frequent, and uh, uh, the, the purpose is to improve accuracy and or completeness. Of course, these, in this case, all the relevant information should be properly uh, documented. For Red Plus, ensuring consistency in definitions and estimates, including the, for the pools and gas considered, between the reference level and the future reporting of results uh, of, of actions, is absolutely key. Within the reference level, consistency should be also ensured between historical data and any future uh, projections. Comparability refers to the, the possibility to compare across countries' estimates. For this purpose, countries should follow the methodology and standard uh, formats, including the location of different sources in categories, provided by the IPCC and agreed by the UNFCC. Comparability is not explicitly mentioned in RED-related COP decisions, because it is it was somehow knowledge that a uh, different country would start from very different uh, points. However, as long as estimates are transparent, consistent, complete and accurate, and they follow APC guidance, they can, see, can be considered broadly comparable from a methodological point of view. Completeness means that estimates should include for all relevant geographical coverage all the agreed categories, activities, gas and pools. In red context, uh, all significant pools and gases should be uh, included. I thought some uh, freedom in interpreting what is significant is left to, to the country and the expert on the team. When gaps exist, all the relevant information and justification on these gaps should be documented in a transparent manner. So justification, if uh, emissions potentially significant uh, activities or pools are not reported uh, are very important. Accuracy means that estimates should be systematically neither over nor under the true value so far as can be judged and uncertainty should be reduced so far as it, as it is practicable. Appropriate methodology should be used in accordance with APC to promote, promote accuracy in inventories and to quantify the uncertainty in order to improve future inventories. So estimating accuracy is primarily aimed to identify uh, the area which uh, deserve more attention and more investment to make accurate more estimates in the future. 
We now move to section 4, which is a structure of a governance inventory, including reporting tables and the national inventory report. A national inventory of greenhouse gas uh, emissions removal is typically divided in two parts. One is reporting tables, which is, as explained already before, a series of standardized tables, so-called CRF tables in the, in the case of greenhouse inventory, that contain mainly quantitative information, so numerical estimates of emissions remo removals. And then there is an inventory report, which is uh, a comprehensive and transparent information about how estimates have been calculated including methods and assumptions. Reporting tables typically include columns for the initial and the final and use category, and additional stratification is encouraged. Stratification means subdivision according to criteria such as climatic zones, soil type, vegetation types, and so on. This is left to the country, but the more, the greater is the desegregation, the more transparent is the information. The activity data, or AD, uh, refers to the area of land in kilo hectare, so 1,000 hectare, subject, for example, to a given activity like gross deforestation, degradation, or forest management. The emission factor, EF, express the value of carbon stock changes per unit of area. So the amount of carbon stock uh, gain for uh, some activity or carbon stock loss per unit of area for, for example, deforestation. And this is separated for each carbon pool. The total change in carbon stock is uh, estimated by multiplying emission factor by activity data. And then there is a table, a column with the total emission expressed as CO2. Then there is a documentation box, which is important to provide reference to rele relevant section of the metro report, if any additional information is needed to understand correctly the numbers included in each uh, cell. This is an example of a table reporting emissions from deforestation. This is modified from KP Lucef table for illustrative purpose only. So it should be seen as just an example to allow understanding of the structure of these tables. You can see on the left, you have land use uh, category and subdivisions. A category may include, uh, for example, total deforestation subdivided in a forest land converted to cropland and forest land converted to grassland. There is a table on a uh, column on uh, area, which is activity data. And then there is uh, a number of columns with implied carbon stock change factor per each pool. The term implied factors means that the reported values represent an average per unit of activity data within the reported category sub subcategory. And the purpose is mainly uh, for comparative purpose, which allow an easy comparison with um, with other uh, activities of other countries. And then uh, there, are, there is a set of uh, columns which express the change in carbon stocks in terms of uh, gigagrams of carbon. And then the final column express the net CO2 emissions removal in terms of uh, CO2, which sums all the change in carbon stocks in all the pools. In addition to numbers, also notation keys may be used in reporting tables. So to ensure completeness, it is good practice to fill all the cells of the table, all the cells that can be filled. If emissions removal have not been estimated or cannot be reported, the following qualitative notation keys should be used along with supporting documentation. NE stands for not estimated, IE included elsewhere, is where uh, emissions removal for given activities are estimated but are included for methodological reason in another cell. C stands for confidential information. N A stands for not applicable, where the activity or category exists but relevant emissions removals are considered never to occur. And O stands for not occurring when an activity or process does not exist within a country. NE is the most uh, used notation keys. For example, if a country decided that a disproportionate amount of effort would be required to collect data for a pool, for a pool from a specific category, which is not key category, in terms of the overall level and trend of national emissions, then the country 
could uh, could uh, decide to exclude this this pool based on the fact that it's not uh, part of a key categories and together with the justification of this exclusion uh, it should put the notation keys and e in the relevant uh, cell of the relevant reporting tables additional reporting tables uh, occur in addition to the one we have seen before other typical tables to be filled in a comprehensive inventory include tables with emissions from other gases like methane and N2O from biomass burning, summary tables with all gases and emissions removals, table with emission trends, covering also data from previous inventory years, and table for illustra illustrating the result of key category analysis for the completeness of the reporting and the recalculations. An inventory report typically includes, first of all, an overview of the trends by gas and by category, then a description of methodologies used, assumptions and data sources and rational for their selections. In the context of red reporting, information on land use, definitions, land data representation, land use database, and data sets on carbon gains and losses are also essential. Then a description of the key categories, including information on the level of disaggregation of this analysis. The key categories are those categories which are most important in a greenhouse gas invention from a quantitative point of view. Then an inventory also includes information on uncertainties, on methods used to calculate uncertainties and the assumptions, on a time series consistency recalculation with justification for providing new estimates, a procedure on quality assurance, quality control, including verification, which as I said before, according to APC is an independent comparison with uh, other estimates to understand possible area of uh, discrepancy or lack of knowledge or possible mistakes in the calculation. Then the, the National Inventory Report includes the description of the institutional arrangement for the inventory planning, preparation and management. This is also important. Information on plan improvements and uh, furthermore, all the relevant inventory information should be archi archived to allow reconstruction of the inventory. We are the final section of our uh, lecture, which will briefly cover the major challenges for reporting rent by uh, developing countries. This is a very brief uh, overview, and of course, uh, situation uh, may uh, differ from country to a country. The question could be what difficulties can be expected by developing countries that are reporting red plus following the five principles outlined before. I mean, in principle, uh, transparency, consistency, and comparability are achievable by most countries if adequate capacity building is, uh, is needed. Uh, let me stress the importance of uh, transparency and uh, consistency. Comparability, as I said, is not explicitly mentioned in red decision but can, uh, can be achieved if all other four principles are also uh, fulfilled. Transparency and consistency are absolutely key for, for RED. Transparency mainly refers to uh, the possibility to not only understand, but also reproduce estimates. And consistency means time series consistency and consistency between the submitted reference level and uh, the information provided for the, for the result when uh, result-based action are, are, are claimed. Then uh, there is completeness, completeness in terms of activities and, and pools. As seen before, uh, completeness is read, strictly speaking, means uh, is something related to transparency, so it's completeness of information. On the other hand, read uh, requires also that all significant pools and activities are uh, included, with some degrees of flexibility in interpreting the word uh, significant. From all the official reports from country, it emerged that only a few countries currently report data on forest degradation and soil carbon, for example. Although these emissions, especially uh, forest degradation and, and soil carbon, where, the, where organic soil are relevant, uh, these emissions are likely to be significant. So without uh, doubt, there is, uh, there is some gap in, uh, in completeness, 
which has to do with the, the lack of appropriate uh, knowledge, appropriate data and information for both, uh, for example, degradation of soil carbon, which are two relevant examples. Finally, accuracy. According to EPC, key categories significant pools should be estimated with higher tiers methods, two or three, which means country-specific data stratified by climate, forest, soil and conversion types. This also may be uh, a big challenge. So summarizing the, the two big challenges are probably the uh, completeness providing information for all relevant uh, significant activities, including where relevant uh, forest degradation and where relevant soil carbon, especially at least soil, uh, organic soil. And then uh, accuracy, which means uh, using a country specific uh, data appropriately stratified. Stratification is something also very, very important is uh, the first step uh, for a good inventory uh, reporting is a good stratification of activity data. And the same stratification should be applied for emission factor. In summary, non and swan countries should report rent performance through biannual update report, which include national organized inventory. The five principles guide the estimation on inventories under the NFCC, as well as the process of review of technical assessment are transparency, consistency, comparability, even if not explicitly mentioned in red, completeness and accuracy. Must, must, uh, the, the, the two most important in the initial phase of red are probably transparency and uh, consistency. But uh, when countries gain experience, completeness and accuracy becomes equally important. Country uh, examples are uh, provided in, uh, in uh, separate uh, modules, including exercises. This last slide includes reference to relevant IPCC uh, methods, Govsi Gold documentation and scientific publications, including the Carbon Fund Methodological Framework from the World Bank. Thank you for listening and good luck with your greenhouse gas inventory.